this isn't going to exactly match the film. And why won't it match the film? Well, none of us have seen the film in 10 years. We couldn't find a print of the film. Basically, you're, you're working from the dark off of a beta tape, correct? And we don't know where the beta tape really comes from. So we're trying to match something that is currently on iTunes or whatever you want to get it from, whatever system, or the, or the DVD. The DVD wasn't approved. It wasn't approved by myself or by Scott. So what we're doing now is we're trying to get back to what we wanted in the very beginning, um, which is a bit more contrast, reduced levels of color. Um, the color does obviously oscillate. Well, Sheriff, you said there was no sign of a struggle. Nothing out of the ordinary. Show them what it was. This is what we did. So this is where that's where it was. This is what it was based on the original DVD. On the, that's what the DVD said. So I wanted it there, which is closer to what a black and white and that, that element of this particular world is. And even on the consumer, it's just a stronger image. And I think that we needed, I felt we needed to do it. But we should also talk about what we did on it. So... Pull your windows up for a sec. We highlighted that section for a reason that'll come up in a second. And, bring, and then we brought down the top so that the skies became a bit more ominous in here. Um, and more atmospheric. And then you go to the next shot, and this is what we're cutting to. So it cuts much more easily than it did. Play it, can you play it as it was? Yes. I don't know how they're even in the same class. Okay, if that's what we want to say our movie was before, I'm saying that was never what the movie was before. Um, and if it was what the movie was before, that's unfortunate. And we kept the concepts of what was in what you matched too, which is off the beta and off the original uh, DVD but it has more of what Scott wanted initially, which was a lack of color within it and more of a black and white feeling. Let's talk about the, the opening titles because you, we talked about the tone and the, the tone shift when you, when you remove that color that was there. Show, show, yeah, show the, uh, the, this is where it was and that's where we went. Yeah. This, to that. It's snow falling on cedars. It's cool. It should be cool in tone and it should have that frigid feeling because it is about the snow that's going to fall on the cedars a little bit later and that's what we tried to match to. We're not trying to make this a warm sepia oriented film from you know that concept of sepia as being in the past and we never went for that look. So this is trying to take it to a place which is matching what it should be. Okay, so take a look at this wide now. Go take the, take the windows out. Okay, so this is this is more or less what it was before. Color, grading was pretty close, but as you can see, the lights coming across. When I look at this image, my eye goes right here. The result of that is because when you're shooting this shot, the lights coming through, and there's no way to, to slow it down over here, because it's coming through and passing directly past uh, past this actor into the zone and you can't do anything. So what we did was bring this down so that your eye now stops going here. The door left the same and then we move over to here. And I think that that is important because I think we should be looking not at walls but at faces and actors. And uh, so when we did that, then we, when we went inside the next shot, for us it wasn't matching exactly, and then we got it to match. So pr previously in the other, other version, can you show the other version? That's the original look, and we went to here. So that we left the same, le we get a luminance in the right, just took this down. Again, your focus is much more on the face than it was. It was just too soft, and the intention that we had was not to be 
uh, a flat picture. That's why we went with the bleach bypass on premier stocks. So the blacks were really solid and there was uh, less, less saturation. I found him tangled in his net. I knew this would happen. The idea was to really isolate her. See, so this shoulder, we don't read it. Well, we could read that shoulder if we wanted to read it, but it doesn't come up. There's no, no light on it. So what it's done is it's created a large negative on this side. You, you just feel like you're only looking at her. So when, she, when that tear flows, it just, it just feels so much stronger now. It, I, you know, it just, um, that's her moment. Like, that's a moment in this film because she's just been told that her husband's dead. One other thing that I felt was when we looked at the original was that there was way too much grain. That's the grain that was instilled on, into the picture. You can see it now shut the grain off. It's not off, it's 35% reduced. It still plays grain, you'll still see the grain. They're gonna do another version of what the grain will be, but the idea is that it was so grainy that it interfered with the way you visualize the movie. It in fact interfered with me emotionally with the image and with people's faces and it was on the woodwork. It was everywhere in the courtroom, it was on every scene. Tell us please, uh, Sheriff, what was your first impression? Well, as you and your deputy inspected the Susan Marie that fateful September morning. I don't think it's necessary when you're coming and you're bringing back a film to match what the film was when we didn't have the information at that time or the capabilities that we now have in terms of the digital intermediate suite. Why not utilize it? I don't want to recreate exactly what the movie looked like because when we had to create these movies, you could never really go in and, and if we wanted to darken something or whatever, we can't improve upon it. I think if we're going to release now into a 4K world with Blu-ray, we should be improving the film, but maintaining the, the, the genuine quality of the film, not to lose the characteristics of it, uh, which I'm trying not to lose, I'm maintaining it, but just trying to put it in a world where it's now being released rather than saying, oh, wait, it looked like this. No, it shouldn't look like this. It's, it's a remaster of a film. We're making it a better looking movie based upon the limitations we had. Hey, Art. I think you better come down here. That's a $40,000 monitor here that we're calibrating off of. And it has to go to a consumer mon monitor, which is up above. Now, can you show me the settings? When you go to it, if you go to a normal picture, what would be standard for everybody? So these are the different choices. Well, you're vivid there. You, the, the, we're, this we, is we go, to, we use cinema all the time. But mo if you go vivid, look at the image change. Okay, we, we work out of cinema most of the time. And I think that what's vital to know is that if your monitor is improperly set, then you're going to have a different look and you're going to complain about what a film looks like. For anyone who actually has a care about this, they need to learn how to find in their picture mo mode a certain number of, of of issues like cinema user, but if you can also go to expert if you want to dive in deeper, which we did. So if we're in a dark room, so we go to expert in a dark room compared to expert in a bright room. This is really complicated stuff and you may not want to get there, but I play with it at home by myself. For example, if I want to watch something that is National Geographic or Blue Planet or something like that, I will go to Vivid uh, because I want it that way and I'm a consumer. I don't have a brain for this. So anyone who's watching this and looking at this material has a brain is sharper than mine for certain and all they gotta do is find these settings and get to it. And I think you'd be a lot happier in the long run and because otherwise the film doesn't look like we're trying and intending it to look like.